There it is. All right. Uh, derivatives. So, Torsten told you what a derivative is today. What's a derivative? The slope of? The slope of what? Yeah, you're all sort of right. It's the slope of the tangent line. Do we know what a tangent line is? What is a tangent line? How many times does it hit the function? It only hits it once. Okay? So, all right. All right. So, derivatives. Oh, I don't like that color. It's nothing but the slope of the tangent line. That's all a derivative is. Okay? It's something that describes the slope of a tangent line. Now, it's, he's going to talk about this after the break, so I won't talk about it right now. It's actually defined as a limit, but nobody uses the limit to calculate derivatives because it's pretty cumbersome especially when you get into complex functions. So you're going to learn all the tricks, which he started with today by showing you the power rule and the uh, product rule. All right, so slope of the tangent line. He introduces one notation, but there's a bunch of notations for derivatives. So there is f prime of x. That reads f prime of x. That basically means the derivative. There you will also see y prime, if you're writing the function in terms of y. And then this one is a little different. You'll see dy dx, which means the derivative of y with respect to wrt x. And that one is used a lot in physics because you can sort of sub it into, if you've taken physics 12 or physics 11, delta y over delta x. I'm sure you've seen that in physics, right? Which is really just the slope of the line, y1 minus y2 over x2 minus x1. Uh, and sometimes we write it like this, d dx of f of x, which would mean the derivative of x, derivative of f of x with respect to x which I'm not going to write because I'm hoping that we get this idea. Okay, so then uh, we'll talk about the constant rule, which is kind of intuitive after what he showed you today. If we have y is equal to, I'll just say c, c is a constant. What does that graph look like? Horizontal line, right? At c. What's the slope of that line? Zero. Therefore, uh, let's say y prime. The notation. Therefore, y prime would equal zero, right? Because it's and the derivative of any constant is zero. Okay, because it's saying what's the slope of the line? The line is slope of that line is zero. That's all it's saying. All right. So then we get into the power rule. Like you said, this is the rule that people who think they know calculus and want to impress you, will say, I can do the derivative of this, of x squared, it's 2x. All right, that only works for basic polynomial functions. All right, the power rule, its definition would be written like this, the derivative with respect to x of x to the n is what? 
What did Torsten do today? You stole the thunder, Bernie. <laughs> you drop the exponent down, and you take one away from the exponent, right? That's power rule. That's all it says. Take the exponent, drop it down, subtract one from the exponent. That's the derivative. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of the stuff he did. Um, so if I say f of x is equal to x to the 15, you will tell me f prime of x is 15 x to the 14. Right? Right, Mrs. Sadler? All right, what if I uh, no. if I give you that? Can you do this in your head? <laughs> that would be impressive. So you rewrite it as an exponent. We always want exponents. When you're doing derivatives and you see a radical, get rid of it. Rewrite it as an exponent. So what's this as an exponent? 3 over 2. Right? Okay, then we can use a power rule. So what do we do? Bring the exponent down. And then take one away. So over to the side or in your head, how do you subtract fractions, people? Common denominator, which is? Two over two, right? And so what do you subtract now? Just the numerators, right? So the answer is a half. So this is x to the one half. Sweet. I just recorded all of that, so it's in the video. <laughs> that was Stephen Sadler of Royal Bay Secondary School. He teaches FMP 10. We keep him away from calculus. <laughs> OK, uh, so if you see a radical, turn it into an exponent, because then you can use the power rule. Uh, I'll just do a negative, because he did a negative, just to make sure. These are all sort of standard questions. If you see a fraction, or like a variable in the denominator is, I guess, what I should say. Rewrite it without the fraction. So what does this become? X to the negative 2, right? You always want it x to some power, and then you can use the power rule. So we drop the exponent down to get the derivative. So it's negative 2. I take away 1 from negative 2. This is a common mistake. What do I get? Negative 3. Do not put negative 1. All right. Um, okay with that? Okay. He didn't title these, but I'm going to call title them. So the constant multiple rule. Which basically says... If you have a constant multiplied by that fra fraction, or the function, sorry, not the fraction, what can you do with the constant in derivatives? You can just pull it out, right, to make your life a little easier. 
So I can just pull the constant out and multiply the constant by whatever the derivative of the function is. Is it easier if I turn the lights out? Is that better? So, really all that means is if you're doing derivatives, you can now have numbers in front of the function. So if I have, I don't know, y is equal to four-fifths, just to change up the variable, I'll do that, four-fifths t, and I want to know what y primed is. What do you do? Yes, drop the five down. The four fifths, essentially you pull it out, which really just means you rewrite it, unless you're gonna do it in your head, but you'll get good at this and doing it in your head. So you just put the four fifths there, and then just do the derivative of, a t, derivative of t to the fifth. So drop the five down, take away one, and you get that. Now you gotta clean it up, because that's ugly. So what, what happens here? Yeah, those fives will cancel, and you're left with 4t to the 4th. If you don't see why the fives cancel, think of it as 5 over 1, so you're multiplying fractions. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 divided by 5 is 4. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so you can do the derivative of this one, then. That says 1 over 2 times the cube root of x squared. What is that derivative? All right, do we like radicals? So what do we do with the radical? So what is the cube root of x squared as an exponent? So it turns into this, right? Uh, turns into that. Now, do we like variables in the denominator? So I have to flip it up, right? So it becomes that. Now can we do it? Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's the cube root of x squared. Sorry. Yeah, it's... I just put them too close together. I should have written it like that. I can see how that would be confusing. Uh, okay, so once you get it to an, a, a variable with an ex exponent, we don't care if the exponent's negative, now use power rule. The one half I don't care about. Just rewrite it. So y primes is one half. What do I do with the negative two thirds? Where does that go? Drop it down, right? So I get negative two thirds. X. Now what do I do with the exponents? You subtract them, right? So off to the side you can go, okay, negative two two-thirds minus one. I need a common denominator, which is three over three. What's negative two-thirds minus three-thirds? Just subtract the tops, right? So it's negative five over three. So this becomes 
this. So this is technically right, but nobody's going to leave it like that, right? Because it doesn't look sophisticated. We are all sophisticated people here. No? <laughs> so we have to clean this up. Now, the one half and the two thirds, anything cancel? The two should go away, right? So then I'm left with negative one third. Now this, you could leave as an answer. I would give you full marks. I think Torsten would give you full marks. But a lot of books don't like negative exponents. So how do I make the exponent positive? So drop the, the x down below. So I got negative 1 over 3x to the 5 thirds. That would be fine. But if you really wanted to, you could write it as this. Pretty much any of these are correct. Well, they're all correct. It's just how you want to write it. OK? Is that OK? All right. Let's do one more before I give you a few practice questions. What about this thing? Change it up to f of x is equal to. So have you seen anything like this yet? All right. You only know how to do polynomials, basically. But you have a single denominator. When you have a single denominator, what does it do? It goes to each term, right? So you can rewrite this as x cubed over x, 2x squared over x, plus x over x, and then simplify it. What's x cubed over x? x squared. What's 2x squared over x? 2x. And then x over x is 1. Now, do the derivative of this. You know how to do a polynomial derivative. Because we can just do each term separately, right? So if I say f prime of this, it is now, what's the derivative of x squared? What's the derivative of 2x? Just 2. What's the derivative of 1, a constant? So that's the derivative. No, 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 that's, that's limits. That's so last yesterday. <laughs> Okay? Is that okay? So if it's if it's not a if it's a radical, turn it into an exponent. If it's a variable in the denominator, turn it into a negative exponent. Make them exponents. Basically, that's a shorthand. If you have a term in the bottom, it goes to all three, divide it off first, simplify it, and then do it. Ashton. Yes, because that graph is going to have a hole in it, right? So we haven't learned it yet, but there's points that you cannot drive. And obviously, if there's a hole in the graph, you can't drive something that doesn't exist. So it, it, at x equals 0, there is no derivative. That, but we're not there yet. Okay? All right. Page 114, numbers. Now I'm going to give you a bunch here. But um, you're not going to have time to finish them all. So there's your questions. Let me just pause this video. OK, product rule. So So obviously, the Power rule has a lot of applications, but it's limited in what you can use it for because a lot of functions are not just simple polynomial functions, okay?
we're not going to look at the trig stuff until after spring break. All right. And then there's log derivatives and there's all this exponential function derivatives that we have to learn. But power rule doesn't really apply to those. Okay. Um, it only applies basically to polynomials. And polynomials can look slightly different. So I could write, well, let's just write out what the product rule is. It says the derivative, and this you need to memorize this. He already wrote it today, but you need to just remember this rule. If you have two functions being multiplied together, does anybody remember it from this morning? What is it? Yeah, it's the derivative. I mean, it doesn't matter the order. It's the derivative of one of them times the other one plus the derivative of the other one times the other function. That's it. So we're just going to go through a couple of examples. So if we have h of x that we'll define as this. Okay. Yeah. I'd give it to you like this. Does that answer your question? Yeah, you're going to find out the whole trick with derivatives is looking at it and realizing, okay, what rule do I need to use here? So they're, they're just, just going to be written like every other math problem, and you have to figure it out. I don't know. It, it, do you see two functions there? Oh, so you're asking me if I'd write it like this, like without, like that? Like, no, because if I just put a dot like that, that means you're multiplying the 2x squared and the 5. Right, and then adding the other two things on the other side. So that's a different question, mathematically. So yes, I guess the answer to your question is yes, it went backwards. Okay, uh, what do we do? But there's two ways, before we even answer this. What are the two ways you could answer it? You could multiply them together, right? You could foil them out. I wouldn't do that, okay? I mean, for this, it's not too bad because they both have an exponent of 1. But as soon as I make that a 3, you can't do that. Well, you can, but that's going to get ugly multiplying that all, all that out. And there's a special rule when you have higher exponents like that that we'll learn. But when it's like this, you could multiply it out. We're learning about the product rule, so we'll do it with the product rule. Okay? Which says the derivative of one of them. So we'll do the derivative of this one first. What's the derivative of 3x plus 2x squared? 3 plus 4x, right? I should write h prime of x here. 3 plus 4x times what? Yeah, the other function plus the derivative of the other function, which is this thing. What's the derivative of 5 plus 4x? 4 times the other function. So essentially, this, if we call this f of x and this g of x, there's f prime of x, there's g of x, there's g prime of x, and there's f of x. Product rule, right? Does that make sense? Asmita? Yes. All right. I'm not going to simplify that because I'm too lazy. I'm going to assume that you can multiply that out and collect like terms. Is that, is that okay if I assume that? I'll give you the answer. Okay, You don't get to do this on a test. I do. DBM. Do a bunch of math. And here's the answer. 
24x squared plus 44x plus 15. Okay? I'm going to assume that you can go to there. You cannot write DBM on a test. Are we okay with that? All right. Let's do a couple more. Um... What do we want to do here? This one, doing it either way is probably about the same level. So do you want to, we could multiply it in. You have a single term on the outside. What's wrong with that single term on the outside though? It's a square root. We don't like square roots, right? How do we, yes. And so the first thing you should do is rewrite it as x to the one-half times x squared plus 8x. Now, pick your poison. You could do product rule, or you could just multiply the x to the one-half in and then do that polynomial. I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to do it on my own. Your choice. I'm going to do it with both, okay? I'll do it with product rule, and I'll show it with, with multiplying it out. Go. Please. Don't have to simplify it, okay? Just for the sake of time. I feel like I have to do it. People done? So let's go through this. If you use product rule, right? You have two functions, x to the 1 half and x squared plus 8x. So product rule says the derivative of the first one, f primed, which is this bit, this is f prime of x. Drop the 1 half down, take 1 away from a half, you get negative a half. This is g of x. And then times g primed, which is that, 2x plus 8, times the original function, which is f of x. That's product rule. I'm not going to simplify that. Don't worry about simplifying that. Okay. No, it's ugly. We would simplify it normally, but for a product rule question, I'm not going to give you one that's like got fractions and stuff. I just wanted to show you. Okay. Does everybody understand that part? Okay. Or you could multiply the x to the one half in here. Okay. So you get x to the one half times x squared plus 8x times x to the one half. In this case, you add these two, which is x to the five halves. 
You add the exponents, x to the 3 halves, take the derivative then. So let's be h prime down here, which means drop the 5 halves down, take away 1, which is 2 over 2. So you get x to the 3 halves. Same thing for the other one. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. So this is the answer. So I'm just going to assume that that simplifies that, hopefully. You want another example? Good. Let's do one more example. This is all going to be uploaded. Okay. You're welcome. What's that? I know. All right. Here's the last example before spring break. Essentially the same question, I just took out all the fractions. So two ways to do it. What do you want to do? There's, I'm just going to freeze it and let you go. Do it any way you want, product or multiply it in. Are you ready? 8x cubed plus 3x squared. If you watch the video, you'll see me make mistakes and then have to fix them. OK? So if you do product rule, you have your, if we're calling this f and g, or I guess we can't call it f and g, because that's the whole thing is g, call it h. It's going to be f primed times h. And then this is f times Let's erase it. h primed times f. Derivative of one times the other plus the derivative of the other times the other one. Add them together. Or especially when you have just no fractional exponents or anything, it's way easier just to dump them in usually. 
because you get this, and then the derivative of that is just 8x cubed. They match, so that makes us happy. That's the last little bit before spring break. Here's some practice questions you should do. Number page one, two, five. You should do one, three. I can't give you any trig stuff because we haven't done that yet. 13, 14. Uh, you don't want to do 14 because that's an even number. 13. Um, can you do that one? What's 63? You can do 63. And some of them, they ask you to evaluate the derivative at a point. So let's say, what is f prime of c? Take the derivative, like for this one. If I said, what is g prime of 4? Basically, you put 4 into your derivative. So it would just be 8 times 4 cubed plus 3 times 4 squared, whatever that is. Okay, so when they ask you to evaluate at a point, they're saying, what they're actually saying is, what is the slope of the graph at that particular point? X equals whatever. All right, so then you plug it in. This is where calculus comes into play in physics, because if you remember physics 11, you would get a curve of some data that you did, usually some ticker tape thing where you send a car down and you count the dots and blah. But anyway, to get the velocity, you would draw a tangent line. Do you remember doing that? And then you do rise over run. Well, that is about the least accurate, so I'm assuming everybody would get different numbers, all right? Calculus allows you to do this accurately and get actual numbers that mean stuff, okay? Uh, that is it for spring, for 